look at some practice problems with this extreme value theorem. Um, as we look at the first one, we're trying to determine which of these functions that the extreme value theorem does not apply. So remember, the extreme value theorem tells us that if a function is continuous on a closed interval, then we know that there is one absolute maximum and one absolute minimum. So which of these graphs does it not apply to? Well, look at graph one. Is it continuous? This is continuous. Now you may be going, oh yeah, but it has a cusp there. You're right, it does have a cusp. That doesn't mean it's not continuous. That simply means that the derivative doesn't exist there, okay? Graph two, is not continuous. So the extreme value theorem doesn't apply. It's not continuous right here, right? Because I would have to pick up my pencil to then draw the rest of the graph. And then on graph three, same thing. It's not continuous. So the extreme value theorem doesn't apply. Okay, look at number two through four. It says to determine the critical numbers here. So we don't need the actual extrema. We're just trying to determine where are those critical points. Now, a critical point is where the derivative equals zero or the derivative is undefined. All right, so where does the derivative equal zero on this graph number two? It looks like it would be equal to zero here at negative three. Where does the derivative not exist? Here at one, I'm sorry, at negative one. And where does the derivative not exist either? It doesn't exist at three. It doesn't exist because it's not continuous there. Okay, look at this graph. We're asking ourselves, where is the derivative either equal to zero or undefined? So let's take the derivative. Um, the derivative of ln is one over the function times the derivative of the inside, which would be two x. So I've got two x over x squared plus four. If I set that equal to zero, that denominator is not going to matter. Please see that. The denominator is not going to matter when you cross multiply. So we end up with that x equals 0 is a critical point. In fact, it's our only critical point. Okay, let's look at number 4. Now, on this one, we'll also take the derivative. I want you to think of this as x plus 3 to the 1 -third. So the derivative would be one-third x plus three to the negative two-thirds or one over three times x plus three to the two-thirds power. Now, this derivative is not going to equal zero, but you do have a value where the derivative doesn't exist. So we know that x equals negative three is a critical point or critical number because h prime doesn't exist there. So remember, you can have critical points where the derivative equals zero or where the derivative is undefined. Now for question five, we're being asked to use a calculator to help us find these extreme, absolute extrema. So I'm gonna switch our view over so we can see my Desmos calculator. Calculator. That'll be a little bit nicer. And by the way, I am linking the Desmos calculator in the um, description so that you can quickly access it if you need to pause and do that. Let's type our function in here. I've got sine of x and then we're times the ln of x. I'm sorry, the ln of x plus 1. And we'll take a look at that. Oh, we're being given an error there. Uh, let's use the parentheses around the x here. There we go. Ooh, that looks like a pretty fun graph. 
Now remember, our interval that we are being given is from one to six, okay? From one to six. So our absolute max and mins, okay? Our absolute highest point on that graph from one to six is going to be the value at two, it looks like. Let's see what that value, and I don't think it's exactly at two, but let's let Desmos tell us, there it is. So we have an absolute max at 1.887, 1.008. We have an absolute min at, and it looks like it's going to be this value down here. Again, we'll let Desmos tell us what that is. It's at 4.81 and negative 1.751. Okay, so that's when we're using a calculator to find our graph. And we're just identifying them. Now, if you're not using Desmos, that's totally okay. You can use the max and min feature on the 8384 calculator if you're using that particular type of calculator. All right, let's keep going. Now, on this one, the instructions ask us to do these independent from a calculator. So let's switch our view back. There we are. Remember, what we're doing on these is we're finding our critical points. Then we're going to evaluate our critical points and our endpoints um, in the function. So let's do the derivative first. It's 3x squared minus 6x, set it equal to 0, and factor so that we get our critical points. There they are. And now we're going to plug those into the function along with our endpoints. So we're doing 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared, which is still 0. We're doing 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared. That's 8 minus 12, which is negative 4. Then I'm doing negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 squared. That's negative 1 minus 3, which is also negative 4. And then I'm putting in 3. It's 27 minus 27, which is still zero. Got an interesting scenario going on here. I've got an absolute max value of zero. And I'm only putting it at this instead of listing coordinates because it asked me to determine the extreme value values. That means the y values. Okay, and then I've got an absolute minimum value of negative four. Now, I could tell you where those minimums and maximums happen, but these just ask me for the absolute minimum and maximum. Okay, let's look at the next problem then. We're again going to find our critical points first, so I'm going to take the derivative. I want you to think of this as x plus two to the one third. So that gives me one-third times x plus 2 to the negative two-thirds. Now, instead of needing to know where this equals 0, we need to know where this does not exist. And so I know my critical value would be at negative 2. G prime doesn't exist. All right, so we'll plug that value into the function along with our endpoints. So if we have negative 2, I've got the cube root of negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. Then I've got the cube root of negative 3 plus 2, which would be the cube root of negative 1, which is negative 1. Then I've got the cube root of 6 plus 2, which is the cube root of 8, which is 2. So on this interval, for this function, I've got an absolute max value of 2 and an absolute min value of negative 1. And again, where do those happen? 
Well, the absolute max happens at x equals 6, and the absolute min value happens at x equals negative 3, but that's not what the problem asked for. Okay, two more here. Let's look at number 8. Number 8 says we have the interval from negative 4 to 0, always leery of uh, fractional functions. So the EVT doesn't apply here. Because h of x uh, is not continuous at x equals negative 2. Voila. Okay. And then our last one here, number 9. We need to find our derivative. So I've got... 3 times 2 thirds, which will give me 2, x to the negative 1 third minus 2. So I've got 2 over x to the 1 third minus 2. Now, friends, notice that the derivative doesn't exist at 0. So I know one critical value is at 0, but I've got to go find the others, which is where this equals 0. So we'll move the 2 over. And then cross multiply. I'll get that x is one, x to the one third is equal to one, so x is one. I've got two critical values then. I've got one critical value where the derivative didn't exist. I've got another critical value where the derivative equals zero. And then I've got my endpoints. Okay, got to keep it all straight here. <laughs> all right, so let's plug those in. I'm doing the function at zero, the function at one, and the function at negative one. So let's see, if x is 0, that's 0 minus 0, so I still get 0. If x is 1, that's 3 minus 2, which is 1. And if x is negative 1, this is 3 plus 2, which is 5. So I get an absolute max value. of five from the endpoint there, and I get an absolute min value of zero. So I hope that helps with these uh, extreme values, maximums and minimums. Remember, focus on your critical values as well as those endpoints. Bye for now.